Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So guys, on today's video, we're gonna have uh, three topics that I wanna talk about, and um, besides other things that I wanna chit chat about. So anyway, I found this website, it's wonderful, it's called candlemaking, candlemakinghelp.com.au. This is a website from Australia, and the website has wonderful information to share with all of us, candle makers, and it's very interesting, and I'm gonna link it below on the description box. So um, today I'm gonna touch on these three subjects, guys. So if you're interested in this website, keep on watching. Yes! Okay guys, welcome back. So I wanna share you uh, first about, let's talk about candle memory, guys. It's something that people don't talk about, and but I find it fa fascinating. And it is, you know, I was reading the article and that they put it on, on, on the website, guys, and it, this is unbelievable. It says, don't, don't think you kind of have a memory. Uh, yeah. So when they talk about candle memory, guys, I'm gonna read you from the article, okay? Uh, it blew my mind when I first saw this, you know, it's unbelievable. Okay, so let me just start. Uh, it's a scientific fact that the candles have memories. From a scientific point of view, when you burn a candle, the flame from the wick heats up. From a scientific point of view, when you burn a candle, the flame from the wick heats up, the wax, the wax in the candle begins to melt. Little by little, the total circumference of the candle melts. And this is known as, in the candle maker terms, a full melt pool. If you blow the flame before you achieve a full melt pool, you'll be left with a ring of hard wax. The next time you light up, the flame from the wick, which heats up the wax, is not able to penetrate that wall of hard wax. So instead of melting outwards, it begins to melt in downwards. It, in it creates a tunnel. Okay, so that's what happens when you have a, a, a small wick that is not able to form a, a full uh, melt pool, guys. So. I don't have that, um, that many to show you guys because I've been able to uh, perfect my, my week testing. Uh, but I have just in here so you can see a little bit of what this article is talking about. So look at this wax in here. I was not able to, to make a full mail pool in here. I almost did. And I'm pretty sure that if I leave it burning a little bit more, longer, I'm pretty sure I would have reached complete mail pool. But again, uh, what this talking about is, okay, let me just keep going. Because the hard, because the wax on the side, it, it becomes harder than the rest. The wax from the, from the, from the side, it starts becoming harder. So it's harder for this to melt and to create a, a, a full melt pool. If your initial burn was done correctly, that is, if you achieve a, a full melt pool, that's, that's why it's so important to uh, test uh, for weak sizes to make sure that you achieve uh, the melt pool, depending on the circumference on, on the, uh, of the vessel, it should be like, if you have two inches wide vessels, it should take two hours to complete a full melt pool. If you have a three inch vessel, it should take three hours to complete the full melt pool. Uh, that is on the desire uh, if the wick is the correct size for the, for the vessel. So, okay, let me repeat this again. If your initial burn was done correctly, that is, you achieve a full melt pool, then it won't matter if you blow your candle before achieving a full melt pool on the second or third time of lighting because the heat from the flame can penetrate the wall of the wax because the wax is softer having been previously melted. A general, general uh, burn times, a jar candle will burn out from the candle's wick center. On an average, it will burn 25 millimeters for every one hour. So as an example, a 75 diameter candle will need approximately three hours to achieve a full melt pool. A, a full uh, melt pool. Interesting, that's why I say like a, a three inch uh, vessel, it would take three hours to f achieve a, a full melt pool. Multiple wick candles will burn slower than a single wick candle because instead of tunneling down the center, the wax gets hot enough to actually pull across the entire, uh, the entire candle. Okay, because it has more than one wick, this, the candle will not re, uh, melt slower than a single wick. Uh, it will not tunnel, it will just spread out more than just t tunneling down, okay? So if, for example, this is another candle that I was testing. I'm pretty sure this will give me a full melt pool. So now you see what I'm talking about when I said uh, uh, the candle has memories. Uh, depending on whatever ha the history of the burn, like for example, this one here, this is a luxury candle that I was trying to work. Uh, 
I've done several uh, several burns, and it has not really achieved a full melt pool. But uh, at the same time, it's not giving me that much tunneling, you know. But it's I know that the walls of the of the wax that have, that is not melted is not gonna melt because I have not I did not reach full melt pool at the first time that I burned. So this is gonna be like a, like this until I, until I finish burning it. And again, I'm gonna make another uh, burn test on this. I remember, guys, you have to trim the wicks whenever you burn it to get rid of the, the carbon deposit that you get on top of the wicks. So like this, okay? Perfect. That's another thing very important, guys. You have to trim the wicks every time you burn because uh, you don't wanna have those, uh, like the mushrooming uh, carbon deposit. You don't wanna have it for the second, for the second burn because it's not gonna be burned cleanly. It's gonna give you a lot of black smoke and we don't want that on our candles, okay? Perfect, so let's see, this is another example of not getting a full melt pool, you see? And these are, I already burned like three times already, and it's not giving me a full melt pool because there's already wax that it's been hardening on the side of the vessel. So this is, a, this is a, a, really, a great example. Be careful not to burn a candle in excess of the time frame given above. It can cause a host, of, a host of problems. The most common problem is that the melt pool is so deep that the wick has nothing to stabilize, so it flows to the side, causing uneven burning. Or it can float onto the jar, which overheats and cracks, posing a real fire risk. Okay, guys, this is what happened to me a couple of days ago. Uh, I was trying to, I was making a, a, a burn test for like a, a double candle like this. So I used a, an LX10 wick on this kind of vessel. And so I noticed that the flame was too aggressive. So I, I, I wanted to test the, I wanted to wick down. And the way I wick down was I made two holes in here and I, and then I inserted two LX8. So thinking, okay, so I don't want to make another candle. So may, maybe if I don't light this up and, and I just light up the, uh, the LX8, I can test, um, the candle but that. So I just wanted to avoid having to make another candle. So guess what guys? I put the candle on our on our, on our dining room console and three hours passed by and I just go down and check. The candle was full of uh, engulfed in flames. Thank goodness this is a ceramic container that I got from Candle Science and it's made of ceramic and it's very it's very uh very solid so it can withstand uh, very uh, uh, heat temperatures but the flames up to here and the house was full of smoke on the first floor and my husband I said my god fire 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 and my husband uh, right away he thought because, uh, he was very smart I was gonna take a towel and just put it on top and that would have made it even worse so he took a, 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 a seven container and he just put it on top of the on the candle and he was uh, able to extinguish the flame without having every all everything all spread out with wax. So we you know so it happens that this is what the website is saying if you get a very deep uh, melt pool guys if you were uh, if you burn if you burn the candle for more than uh, the recommended time the wick inside the candle starts to float. It starts to move because it has it's all liquid. So that's what happened also. So what happened is that uh, the wick that I inserted to test it moved over to the other wicks, igniting the other two wicks. So, it, so the candle was burning with four flames. That, went, that, that made the whole thing uh, igniting in the fire. Okay, so that's why it's very important to people to uh, be aware not to overburn uh, the candle for much more than uh, recommended time and always to be in a room that you can be uh, watching the candle away from any flammable materials. Thank goodness we have a fireproof console table. It's made of glass, it's made of mirrors. So it didn't get warm, it didn't get hot, it didn't uh, melt anything. Nothing got damaged, thank goodness. How can I fix, uh, they say saying here, they give you an option, how can I fix a candle that, that has a tunnel? So one option is you can scrape off the hard wax to relabel the candle. 
Okay, so in other words, you can just scrape the wax that you have on, uh, on the sides in here and light up the candle again and just let uh, wait until you form a full, a full melt pool. Okay, so meaning like you can just, let me just see if I can have some, let me just get a tool. Okay, so if I wanna uh, fix the tunneling guys, I take a, like a, a non-scratching spatula and I just go on the side like this and I just, you know, take, Take the excess wax from the coin from the from the from the sides. So you can just level it off again. So now it's all level. So you can make another test, okay? And just keep burning and see what results you get. So let me just do that with one more candle. So I'm gonna take this one. I have a little bit of tunneling, you see? So I'm just gonna take, I'm just gonna scrape. You just want to make a level again. So just get rid of the extra wax. So that way. So what I'm doing is I'm clearing the memory and just make it make the, the candle uh, believe that it's the first burn. You see, I'm, I'm making it all level. So again, guys, so if you don't get a full melt pool after the recommended time, which is an hour per inch of thickness, I mean of uh, diameter, this in here, this vessel is three inches also. So it should take three hours for the melt pool to form. Sometimes it takes three and a half hours, guys. It's fine, you know. It's if you're almost there to, to the point that you think you, you may be able to reach a, a a full melt pool, just you know between three and four hours, it's fine. Let me just fix this one too. You know, it's sometimes you don't get to burn the candle for that long, so it's good for you to get rid of this wax because this wax is never gonna melt again because it's very hard. Okay, so this is uh, one of the topics that I wanted to talk to you about. So let me just uh, put everything away and I'll be right back. Okay guys, welcome back. So the next topic that we have in here to show you is number two. What are fragrance notes? Okay, so as you, for all the new one guys, for all the new guys that have joined the, the different groups, you know, and wondering, oh, what is, a, what is a note? What is a fragrance note? Candle fragrance is not an afterthought. It's the driving force amongst consumers in deciding which candle to buy. Scientists have proven that pleasing aromas allevi alleviate stress, heighten mood, enhance sex drive, and even affect alertness in the office, just by stimulating the olfactory pathways to the brain. When consumers buy a scented candle, they often base the decision on the cold throw of the candle, yes. In candle making, uh, the terms uh, cold throw, cold throw, refers to the strength or intensity of the fragrance before lighting when the candle is solid. Okay, so it's a smell that you, when you go to a store and you smell it, you say, yeah, and you get this uh, the strong aroma and the scent, and this is what sells the candle. Beautiful. So you smell the candle, and then you read the, what it is, honeysuckle and jasmine. Oh my God, you fall in love, and you buy it right there. Okay. Adversely, when the candle is burning, the fragrance you enjoy is called hot throw. So both hot and cold throw are essential when making or selling candles. The, si the science behind the two terms is, is necessarily the same, but the conditions of both are entirely different, mainly in scent strength, but sometimes also in the character of the scent. Candle fragrance oils are generally a mixture of essential oils, synthetic aroma chemicals, and aromatic resins. Each contributes to the overall scent, and we refer to these as scents as fragrance notes. Top notes. Top notes are perceived immediately. It's the uh, the first uh, the first thing that you that you uh, that you brain think of. The, oh my God, jasmine or or, or, or bergamot or uh, vanilla. You know, it's it's the first thing that you scent. The first thing, uh, scent that, uh, that you recognize when you smell something. The same as in in perfumes. Okay, uh, uh, top notes are perceived immediately. They consist of small molecules that evaporate quickly. That's why, you know, you, uh, the molecules are so small that it's just evaporating uh, very rapidly. So that's why it, they penetrate, you know, it's quicker. Okay, it's the, uh, they perform an initial impressions of a scent. The scents are fresh, assertive, and usually sharp. The compounds that contribute to top notes are potent, vo volatile, and evaporate quickly. 
Okay, so these are the first notes that just evaporate very fast. Okay, the mid notes. Uh, from the heart or the main body of a fragrance and emerged just before when the top note dissipates. So this is like the other note that uh, just as the first notes evaporate, the molecule evaporates, the second uh, molecules come and evaporate after that. Uh, they take a little longer to evaporate and serve to mask the sometimes unpleasant initial impressions of the base notes. Yeah, sometimes when you smell, when you first smell a candle, oh my God, it's very potent. Let's say you have like a, like a cannabis scent and it's very strong and you say, oh my God. But then uh, as it evaporates, the same thing with perfume, as it evaporates, then you come, it drives into something more complex, more more calming, you know, more more friendly to you after you after you taste. That's when the middle notes uh, come. And the base, the base notes are large, heavy molecules that evaporate slowly, and they appear close to the departure of the middle notes. The base and mid notes together are the central theme of the fragrance. Base notes bring depth and solidity to a fragrance. Compounds of this class are often the, the fixatives used to hold and boost the strength of the lighted top notes, the lighted top and middle tone. So uh, the base note, it's what really like brings everything together. It's like, it's like the, uh, the base, like what it says, okay, it's like uh, what holds everything together. You know, it's like, like a mothership. Okay, and that's, that's what explains the notes. You know, it's the, basically it's uh, the size of the molecule, you know, uh, the strength of the, uh, it's based on that. It's, you know, which one is bigger than which one is smaller, so that they, they evaporate faster. Okay, so that comes, that tells you the story about what a fragrant note is, you know. That's why you see sometimes, uh, you know, it's, you see, um, when you see the profile, the profile on the notes, and uh, sometimes they say like top notes is like a patchouli or a bergamot. Uh, the base note could be uh, a, a different herbs, a rosemary, or could be a pine. And then the base notes could be a base of vanilla or cinnamon, you know, something that holds everything together and complements the, uh, the other notes, okay? So that's what notes it's all about. Okay, topic number three, it says, why does fragrance flashpoint matter? Before you start adding fragrance to your molten wax, you should understand how a fragrance flashpoint could make or break a candle. Fragrance flashpoint refers to the temperature at which the scent will evaporate. Okay, so this is the flashpoint in here. For example, white birch. The flashpoint is 159 Fahrenheit. The flashpoint for rosemary sage is 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Candle Science puts all the flashpoints on the labels. Uh, the, fla uh, the flaming candle, they don't put the uh, the, flagrant, uh, the, fragrant, uh, the flashpoint on the label, so you have to go into the into the website and find out what is the um, the flashpoint of each fragrance before you start uh, making your candles. It's ideal, okay? So, for example, if your fragrance oil, let's take I'm gonna make a mixture of fragrances now to make a candle. If you frag, yeah, for example, if your fragrance oil has a flashpoint of a hundred and Let's say, let's use uh, ro rosemary sage, for example. If your fragrance, okay, if, you, if for example, your fragrance oil has a flashpoint of 175 degrees Fahrenheit, like rosemary sage has, and you add it to a wax at 185 degrees, which is what they recommend uh, for PB600, uh, the top notes will burn off, evaporate, and a weaker, often less desirable fragrance will remain. Some candle makers complain that although they have added the maximum fragrance load, the candles have little or no scent, and flashpoint is usually the reason why, okay? That makes a lot of sense. Uh, sometimes I'm, I'm testing all these candles and I'm adding uh, the fragrance oil, uh, this, what the, uh, the manufacturers recommend, and I'm getting very little uh, scent. Just bring this down a little bit more. So, and um, this makes a lot of sense to me. So you can, you can find out exactly what temperature to add your fragrance oils to your wax by checking the fragrance flashpoint to the fragrance. Okay, perfect. You can work from the highest fragrance flashpoint as the blend will operate from the highest flashpoint, not the lowest. Okay, so you have, you'll have to find the balance when it comes to wax temperature 
when you're adding the fragrance. Okay, guys, so this means, for example, if I mix rosemary sage uh, with uh, white birch, and I notice that white birch is 159 at uh, the flashpoint degrees, uh, but rosemary is 175, so and I'm gonna blend this together equal parts. So I can just see, okay, so I'm gonna use the higher flash point to pour the wax, to pour the flash, uh, to pour the fragrance oil into the wax, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, uh, knowing that the flash point is 175 degrees, but the manufacturer recommends to add the wax, uh, the fragrance oil to the wax at 185, you know what? I'm just gonna wait and I'm just gonna add it at 175. To make it safer, I'm gonna add it to 170 because I know that uh, the scent is not gonna evaporate at 170 because the flash point is 175, okay? So that's to make it a little safer for me and to ensure that I'm gonna be having uh, the most uh, HD and CT that I can on the candle. Okay, so you must, your wax must be fully melted when you add and mix the fragrance. So it disperses evenly throughout the wax. The closer the wax is to the congealing point, the more difficult it is for the fragrance to spread evenly. Please note, difficulty will be experienced if you add the fragrance oils with a flash point below. Uh, another thing that you have to take into consideration, if you add the fragrance oil below the uh, melting point of the wax, it's gonna be very tough for the fragrance oil to combine to the uh, with the uh, with the wax, therefore it's gonna, it, the candle is not gonna work out. It's gonna skip. Uh, the fragrance oil are gonna be separated. It's not gonna blend into the wax. So you have to make a choice, you know. Uh, so you better off making it adding the oil right below to the flash points to make sure you have a complete blend of the fragrance oil. Um, okay, so it's just thinking candle making is a science. And honestly, it can take years to get it right. If you pour your candles at the fragrances flashpoint, you're most likely to enjoy a great cold and hot throw scent. Now, make a, now to make a great candle, you also need to think about the wax and the wicks as all the three need to be in harmony with each other. So it's a whole science, guys. It's like, that's why it's taking me so long to come up with the right formulation for my for my for my candles, you know, I'm I'm testing all different wigs, all different uh, scent combinations, you know, fragrance fragrance blends. Now I'm gonna start testing. This is something good that I that I just learned about this. Now I'm gonna start testing, adding the fragrance oils instead of what the wax manufacturing company is telling me. I'm gonna go by what the the flash points the highest flash points uh, in order to preserve the uh, the fragrance oil integrity and not evaporating into the, air, into the air. I hope I make it clear, guys. And again, I'm gonna post, uh, I'm gonna keep the link, I'm gonna link this on the description box, box below, guys. Um, yeah, check it out. And you know, I'm just trying to keep you inf informed. Uh, I found it fascinating for me to give you this information. I think we should share with all of us. Um, all the knowledge in order to make a better candle and if I can save you time on testing and um, just give me also your ideas on this. I would appreciate guys if you comment below if you have done this before on your candles. Don't forget to give a thumbs up to this video guys, it really helped me out into uh, making better content and also if you haven't, subscribe to my channel and share my content with all the people that you think may come, uh, make uh, benefit from my information and guys until the next video, take care of yourself and each other and bye!